So right off the bat, I have to admit, I know very little about comic books. In fact, recently, I was just trying to go find some comic books for my son because I thought, oh, that could be a fun way to teach him how to read. And I was surprised I couldn't find comic books. Do you guys know where to find comic books? Like, where do you buy them? Are you into comic books, by the way? Kind of curious where people are in that. I know that's kind of the cool thing now, but outside of a comic book store, which we don't have, there is not a lot of places or any places to buy comic books. So when presented with this idea of this video game that talks about superheroes, combines it with strategy RPG game mechanics, and also has a very dark story, I figured I'm gonna like it, but I wasn't really sure since I've been out of the loop for so long. Now thankfully you don't have to know anything about comic books coming into this game. The game is called Capes and it's actually not based on anything else, it doesn't have any deeper lore which I'm very surprised by because the writing, the story, the characters, the lore, it's all done really, really well. You would expect this to be from an existing IP, but no, it's not. So let's talk about capes. Will this game be the superhero that saves you from boredom, or will it be just another Superman 64? But before we get into that, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps the channel. It means a lot to me, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys who do that. You're amazing. Anyway, looking into capes, like I said, the first thing that really got to me was just the gameplay. To the strategy RPG, I love that grid-based combat. It's so much fun for me, and it really harkens back to, like, Final Fantasy Tactics or Fire Emblem and all of those things. So when you take it out of that world, it becomes more fascinating to me. I absolutely adore the idea of taking it into a more modern age, and there are certain games that already do that, but having it in this world, I think, plays off really well because you do still have, like, the mysticism. You have superpowers, you have things like that, which give it more of a magical tone, yet it still feels kind of like XCOM in a way. Now that has been something that a lot of people have said is that this game is sort of like Midnight Sun or XCOM, but I would disagree. I think that Capes is far more traditional. There's a few mechanics that are a little bit different, but for the most part, if you are cool with Fire Emblem or Final Fantasy Tactics or any of those games, you'll feel right at home with Capes. There is a mechanic where you can disarm an enemy and essentially this works in many different ways every character has an ability to disarm the enemy and if you do that you'll essentially take down their damage production and that really helps especially when you're facing just a ton of enemies them staying tried and true to that formula is actually something that i really appreciated because they've already mixed it up enough that I feel like if they would have added cards or, or went deeply technical, that could really scare a lot of people off. And I think that the story alone, the characters, and yes, the gameplay, are enough to keep a lot of people very interested and engaged in this. Now, I will say with the combat, it really depends which character you're using, and I love that. Because you can't just do a one-size-fits-all type of combat for individuals. No, they each have to do their own style. And what I really like about it is it actually makes you think a little bit. It makes you use different skills and use them as support or attack or defense. Now, I'm not going to get into too many of the characters. There are a few that really pop out to you but one of them is your main defender and you start off with in the game with him basically now, he can essentially just take a lot of damage but what is important is to keep his aggro up to keep the taunts going to use his ability to slow people down or to stop them altogether so each character has all these different kind of skills that really benefit their style of play but at the same time, he can't take a whole bunch of people down. He can just hold their attention. You need somebody like Rebound, who is the more aggro, the more attacker. Now, she herself is a glass cannon. She can do a lot of damage. Playing more like a thief or a ninja, where she can jump up behind enemies, attack them, and do some brutal damage. But if she's caught, she's going to take a lot of damage. Now, she relies more on stealth and movement so a lot of that you're watching her teleport so i like it it's kind of reminds me of nightcrawler in a lot of ways but the important thing to remember is just to play to the character's strengths and make sure to use your team if you do those things you're kind of be fine but that sort of gameplay that strategy is just super addictive now one thing that i did say is they already kind of mixed up the gameplay how did they do that well they actually added more action points in a way so you do have two actions that you can take per turn. And don't worry, this might seem like it might make the characters OP. It doesn't. In fact, many times this just gives you an opportunity to use 
one of your support skills as well as an attack. Movement is also different than a lot of other games. Yes, you're given a certain area in which you can move, but you can sort of go up to an enemy, attack, and as long as you have enough movement points left, you can hop back, you can teleport back, however you want to play it. And again, so much of it really just depends on what character you're using and what works best for that character. So as you can tell, I love gameplay. I think it's amazing. The only thing that really took my mind off of that, though, was the story. The story is done incredibly well. Now, essentially, this game follows a group, like I said, they're called the Capes. Now, 20 years prior to the events of this game, they were essentially wiped out. They lost to the supervillains, and now being a superhero is illegal. And while most of the capes have been killed or made disappear, there is still one guy left. Someone who was from the past. His name is Doctrine, and he sort of helps recruit new capes, new superheroes. And yes, part of this is to just be a good guy, save them from the government or the evil corporation, the company. But also, he has a plan for revenge. He wants nothing more than to make the these evil villains pay for what they did to his friends, his loved ones. But first, he's gonna have to find more help. He's gonna have to reestablish a team, and that is where you pretty much jump in on the game, as you basically start with only two other members who are out there in the field, which gives you a really good opportunity to kind of learn the characters. Sort of gives you a strategy on how to handle incoming characters as well. They don't throw too much at you at once. But the story really takes off from here. And one of the things that I really, really appreciated about it was the fact that for me, it's more dark and gritty. It's more Watchmen than it is X-Men. And I've seen a lot of people say it's like X-Men. No, not really. It's pretty dark. They definitely are not afraid to go there. And I'm glad they do because there's so many stories and games like this that need that. They need some cursing, some, I don't know, diversity. When I say diversity, I just, yeah, I can't explain too much. I don't want to explain too much, but just trust me that there's a lot here more than just your carbon copy cutesy traditional superhero game. And I'll just finish that by saying that there are a, di a diverse group of good guys. And what I mean by that is there are some good guys and then there's some, yeah, I think he's a good guy, but I don't know. And just excellent writing and dialogue that keeps you questioning the entire time and really wanting to know more about the story. Now, as far as performance goes, I never had an issue with the game. But there again, this is a turn-based strategy RPG, so you're not actually expecting it or needing it to hit at like 60 frames per second. So I just, I can say this, never had a crash, never had any issues like that. Game performed well. Graphically speaking, I think there's some people who are not gonna like the, the art style that they went with. I personally did. I think it matches the energy of the game. And I think the thing that people won't really like, not all people are gonna like about it, is the fact that the characters aren't incredibly welcoming. Like, if you ran into some of these characters in a dark alleyway, you would be questioning your safety. And I love that, because that's the game. Like, it, it's almost more realistic that way, at least to me. Now, as for any negative things about it, I would say the camera can sometimes be a little bit of a pain in the butt. You can't always see your characters. There's sometimes when you're in different areas where your character is kind of obstructed by something in the environment or something, but it's really no big deal. And I would also say, too, the battles do get kind of long. Like, it at times feels like they're too long at times. So many of the times it's very engaging and it's incredibly fun. But there are some of those, especially if you're just trying to grind and level up, the battles are a little annoyingly long. And a friend of mine did complain about the difficulty. He said that he found the game pretty difficult. Now, I disagree. I didn't find it that hard at all. But I will say, I did run some of the simulation missions so I could gain some levels. Not really because it was difficult, because I really wanted to just upgrade my characters, because I found that to be incredibly fun. But ultimately, I would have to give this game a 9 out of 10. And it's a very strong 9, by the way. It's just there's not a lot to dislike about this game. Everything that... I really enjoy is in this game and they do it really well and technically it's also really difficult to give this game a negative score because there's nothing wrong with it so ultimately yeah i think it well well deserves that 9 out of 10. also i'd like to shout out the publishers dead lake or did 
Didliak? I don't know how you say your name, but I love you guys. You guys are amazing. And just thank you for hooking me up with a review copy so that I could review this game. And I truly appreciate it. But lastly, I'm curious what you think about it. What do you guys think? Are you fans of strategy RPGs? Are you interested in capes? Is this a game that you've heard about? Or is this a game you're just learning about now? Have you thought, oh, man, I wish Midnight Suns would come to the Switch, but it didn't. And now you're thinking, hey, this might be something that is even better than that. Are you fans of superheroes? Anything and everything down in the comment section is so appreciated. I love each and every one of you guys. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.